Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Elderly man found dead inside car in Maypen. An elderly man was found dead inside his car along Jackson Street in Maypen, current on Tuesday morning. He has been identified as Hugh Evans, who lives at a Glenmore housing scheme. Persons at the scene cried uncontrollably. Evans was described as a good man. Mass Hugh is one in a million. I miss him so much. What are we going to do? I'm weak. I can't say no more, said Claudette McFarlane, a friend and neighbor of Evans. Jocelyn Sterling said Evans was like a father to him. Stating that they had a good relationship, Sterling, a good farmer, said he rushed to the scene on hearing the news. Person of interest in death of social media personality in custody. Roshane Patterson, the person of interest name in relation to the investigation of the death of social media personality, Anika Sikiana Towson is in police custody. According to the police, Patterson otherwise Scott was arrested at a guest house in Hanover shortly after 1 o'clock on Wednesday morning. 35-year-old Towson was found dead in the sea at Reading in St. James on Friday, October 21. Following her death, Patterson was named as a person of interest in the investigation and was asked to turn himself into the Freeport Police Station by 5 p.m. Saturday, October 22. However, he did not comply. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of Crime and Security Portfolio Fitzbailey had stated on Tuesday that Mr. Patterson was expected to report to the police later this week. At least six people shot and killed in separate incidents in Clarendon. At least six people were shot and killed in separate incidents in Clarendon between November 1 and November 2. The incident took place in Tollgate, Yorktown, Buckner and Chapaton. Dead are 61-year-old businessman Evan Francis and 46-year-old car wash attendant Alisa Francis, both of Durham Street, 23-year-old labourer Oshin Saman of Top Buckner District, Maypen, both in the parish, and 54-year-old Sylvester Richardson. The others remain unidentified. In the latest incident shortly after 6 this morning, one man was killed in Chapaton. The police say further information is not available at this time. Meantime, at about 11.15 p.m., someone was shot and killed in Botnor. Reports are that he was walking along the top Botnor main road when he was spawned upon by a gunman who opened gunfire hitting him. About an hour earlier, about 10 p.m., Richardson and two other people were at a shop when gunmen, posing as customers, entered and opened gunfire hitting them. The three wounded people were taken to hospital, where Richardson and another man were pronounced dead and the other admitted. And earlier in Tollgate, Evans Francis and his wife Alicia were killed at about 5.30 p.m. Reports were that both persons arrived at their home in separate vehicles when they were pounced upon by a gunman who opened gunfire hitting them. On Monday, Mr. Francis' son, 40-year-old taxi operator Kenneth Francis, was killed near his home in Springfield. It's not clear if the incidents are related. Head of the Clarendon Police Senior Superintendent Carlos Russell noted, however, that the murder of the cop was a result of an alleged domestic dispute over land. He said the police are falling leads into the incident. SSP Russell said the other murders are also being investigated. He has said no motive has been established for the double murder in Yorktown. As it relates to the Yorktown incident, we are still carrying out investigation into that matter. Um, at present, we are not. We do not know the motive for those uh, murders, but we are also asking citizens who are in the area who have any information to can call us. Meantime, counsel for the Yorktown Division in Clarendon, Opel Purcell, has condemned the murders. I'm, I'm disturbed. De definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm just out of my cell. What is going on now with crime and the criminals taking over is like we are under siege. And I, I, I don't know what is going to resolve it, but definitely the government have to do some something to, to, to try and resolve the, the crime and criminality that is on our people. I tell you, it is, it is outrending, and I would really love to see what can come out of this because we can't continue like this. Just the night before, we have a taxi man from Duke Street also, originated from Duke Street, who was killed, and the two that the, the gentleman that was killed in Duke Street after is, is his father. So can you imagine a father and a son, plus a fiancé of the father, all killed in just 24 hours, less than 24 hours? Man gone down in Premento Hill, St. James. A man was shot and killed by a gunman in Premento Hill, Germantown, St. James on Monday night. He has been identified as 19-year-old Joshua Swaby of Marrowntown in the parish. 
The police report that about 9 p.m., residents heard explosions and raised an alarm. On arrival of the police, Swibby was discovered face down in blood with multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was transported to the Connor Regional Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Deputy Mayor of Morant Bay, Lenmert Rawl, has died. Deputy Mayor of Morant Bay Councillor, Lenmert Rawl, has died. Minister of Local Government, Desmond McKenzie, says Rawl died in New York in the United States. McKenzie says Rawl felt unwell and was taken to hospital where he passed away. The departure of Councillor Rawl is as shocking as it is sad. I know that this news is still being absorbed in the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation, in his beloved Trinityville Division in Western St. Thomas, and in the wider parish, where he was also very active as an entrepreneur, said Mackenzie in a statement. He said Rawl, who was serving his fourth term in the Trinityville Division, was dedicated to local government. He further said that he also commanded the respect of his colleagues in the Municipal Corporation, having served as Deputy Mayor from 2007 to 2012 and as mayor from 2016 to 2018, and then as deputy mayor to the time of his untimely demise. I pay tribute to the late Lenwert Rawl as a devoted servant of local government and of Jamaica. You will be sorely missed. I extend heartfelt condolences to his family, and I pray for God's healing power to cover them in this time of intense pain and loss. Government satisfied with Dr. Tufton's explanation about the handing of BJH bacterial outbreak. Information Minister Robert Morgan says the government is satisfied with the explanation given by Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton about the handing of the bacterial outbreak at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital which resulted in the deaths of some babies. The opposition has blasted the Health Minister for not making the issue public sooner and has called for his resignation. However, Dr. Tufton has been stranded in his position that the decisions taken were in a bid to avoid creating public hysteria. Responding to questions during November 2nd post-Cabinet press briefing, Mr. Morgan said the government has confidence in Dr. Tufton. He said the way in which the ministry handled the situation is commendable in comparison to other similar incidents in the past. Well, I think what is commendable about this situation is how the, the Ministry of Health and its staff managed the situation. Um, if you compare it to previous, you would have seen an escalating of the incidents regarding babies not making it. What has happened here is that immediately as it was found out that there was a challenge, there was a cauterization. So in the first month, they had about seven, second month, they had about two, then one. So you saw a tapering off of the incidents. And I think that is something that the country should be proud of, that our healthcare workers and the administration of the hospital, led by the minister, were able to quickly deal with what was a very um, challenging situation. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says cost of damage to roads caused by traffic and storm Ion is $889 million. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the cost of damage to roads caused by traffic and storm Ion is $889 million. Flood rains from traffic and storm Ion affected the area in September, causing damage to several roadways. Clarendon suffered the blunt of the damage. Mr. Honest made the disclosure while speaking in Parliament on November 1. He said that amount, the cost to reopen and improve the roadways, is $359 million, while prominent work such as retaining walls accounted for the remaining sum. Prime Minister Andrew Honest noted that the country's fiscal situation will not allow for other required works to be implemented immediately. As such, he reiterated that focus has been placed on the clearing of block roads, clearing of critical drains, which are now heavily sealed, patching of main thoroughfares and the construction of new structures. The estimates for the flood damage have been finalized. Detailed designs are being done for retaining walls and pavement repairs. I'll now provide preliminary estimates uh, to undertake the remedial works as well as the proposed permanent works. Madam Speaker, the total cost resulting from damage to the road network by Tropical Storm Ian is 889 million Jamaican dollars. And it is broken down as follows. One, the cost to reopen the affected works and improve the drivability of the roadways is estimated at 359 million dollars. And the cost to undertake permanent works, primarily retaining walls, drainage structures 
and so forth is estimated at $530 million. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification.